G'day, it's Chris, and well, today I've got Chris Thompson from Amber Electric on the line with me. And well, he's one of the co founders and CEO of Amber Electric, and these guys are, well, I think they're rather new to the market, but let's find out some more. G'day, Chris. Hey, Chris, how are you going? Yeah, good, mate. Thanks for joining me. Hope you're well. Not at all. I'm very well, thank you. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of people with uh, questions out there as to, you know, what, what this new uh, electricity company is and how you guys actually operate. So, um, can you tell us uh, about Amber Electric? Yeah, absolutely. So, Amber is really a, a new way to buy power for Australian households and, and in the future, small businesses. And what we do that, that's pretty different is we actually give households direct access to the true wholesale price in the market. So the wholesale price is where basically big retailers and, and big um, consumer developers that you always buy their power and the, and the price that changes every 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it's driven by supply and demand. Yeah. Um, but traditionally, you know, everyday households haven't been able to get access to that price. And so they have to buy from a retailer and the retailer buys at the wholesale price mm -hmm. um, and then sort of adds on a bunch of margins and then sells it to the customer at that inflated fixed price. Yeah. Um, but what we do is we actually pass that changing wholesale price directly through to, to everyday customers. And so what that means is that customers can actually start to um, get incredible price on electricity by starting to shift some of their usage to those cheap times. Yeah. Um, with the real bonus being that those at the, increasingly the driver of um, prices in the wholesale market is the availability of renewables. So when it's windy and sunny, wholesale prices come right down as we get all this uh, renewables flooding into the grid. Yep. Um, and so what that means is that when customers are trying to use power at those cheaper times, they're also using power at renewable times. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win for, for customers and for the planet. Yeah, that's a good, good way of putting that. And to, uh, before we go any further, I should actually mention, I've recently actually joined Amber Electric and this is definitely not an advert. No, it's not an advert. <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm still in my learning phase of this. So um, I, I will do a, a video in the future as to you know what it's like to actually be with them and the realities of how it actually works, what it looks like and things like that. Um, so yeah, you've answered some great stuff there around um, what Amber is and how you're actually different from normal retailers. Um, can you explain the difference then between how uh, the renewable side of the business works in terms of like on your website, you talk about being um, net carbon offset and uh, renewable energy credits. Yeah, so really the most important thing for us and, and you know, the challenge we're really focused on is how do we actually move um, Australia to 100% renewables. And if you go back sort of you know, 10, 15 years ago, the challenge used to be that renewables were quite an expensive way to, to generate electricity. Mm, mm. But over the last 10 years, the, the price of solar and wind has absolutely collapsed, yep. um, at, which is in, in a really amazing way. And so the challenge now is just that it's not always windy and sunny. Mm. Um, and so the biggest focus that what we have is, is actually this dynamic of passing through that changing wholesale price and then giving people an incentive to use power at the times that those renewables are generating. Mm. But that's our, you know, our biggest focus. Now, obviously, at the moment, the grid in Australia is not still 100% renewable yet we still have a lot of coal and a lot of gas yep. and so what we want to make sure that we're doing then in addition is to make sure that we're still offsetting the remainder of, of you know the people's consumption from those sources and so we do that in, in, with two options the first is that um the carbon neutral plan that we have mm -hmm. um and that's sort of the 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 cheaper of the options and, yeah. and basically what we do there is we offset the emissions generated by a customer's electricity in australia um, by buying internationally certified carbon credits. Okay, so yeah. that usually goes to fund sort of projects overseas, but often renewable projects um, in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And then the second one that we also um, offer is then a 100% green power plan. And mm -hmm. so that's the Australian government certified program. And, it, and basically the way that that works is that you're directly offsetting your usage mm -hmm. with renewables in Australia. So renewable generators in Australia, when they produce electricity, um, also generate renewable certificates. Mm. And so we basically buy those certificates and, and then essentially tear them up um, <laughs> to offset the, the, the usage for our customers there. Gotcha. All right. That's awesome. And I guess that's an important thing then. I, I didn't actually realize even myself, like I've had renewable power since like the early 2000s when it was like 50% more than the average. And um, yeah. I didn't realize that realistically what I was probably buying there were perhaps maybe those certificates and it was just a carbon neutral yeah, thing. Yeah. So, so anytime you've been buying a, a renewable plan in Australia, yeah. and it's actually quite heavily regulated how people can market it and, and mm, so on, yeah. you're buying those certificates. Yeah. And so we feel like that's still really great, right? Like it helps subsidize and create the good price incentive for additional renewables to get built. Yeah. A little bit though, it is probably dealing with the old problem. It's dealing with that dynamic of renewables being an expensive way to generate electricity. Mm. Um, where that, increasingly that, that's just not the case anymore. The, the, the new problem is 
actually getting you know people to use power at the time that those renewables are generating mm-hmm. so that we can keep demand in sync with, with supply and, and really try to get to 100% renewable faster. All right, that's great. Thanks for that. And um, just out of interest then, most of your customers will no doubt actually have like solar power. And so I've noticed like with, like with Amber Electric, you actually offer better feed-in tariff rates than the norm. Can you explain that? Yeah, so a lot of our customers have, have solar panels. Probably not most. It's about thirty percent hmm. um, at the moment, which is uh, more more than the country, but still still not quite most. Yeah. So the way we do our solar feed and tariff is, is again pretty different, um, just in the same way that we do our, our normal tariff. Um, is different. And what we actually do there is we actually pay out wholesale prices then directly for customers. Yeah. So your your solar feed and tariff is also changing every thirty minutes, mm-hmm. um, and that then basically reflects as well the what we um, earn from the market when we sell in that solar. So it's, it's, it's sort of that one for one. Mm. Um, what that means is that if you're actually able to export your solar at times where it's expensive, you can get really amazing prices. Yeah. Um, and particularly, I mean, there's a few really expensive days every year. We had customers that earned about sort of two hundred dollars in an afternoon what? by exporting their solar um, during during those sort of price spike times. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think when we look at it over a year, we wouldn't expect customers necessarily on solar to earn better than, than all the price in the market. There often mm. are some some really and have traditionally been some really big solar feed and tariffs um, from other retailers, yeah. usually going along with really bad plans in other parts. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so. Um, if you've got a massive solar system, we still might not be the best option for you. Mm-hmm. But if you've got a solar system and a battery, then we're definitely going to be the, the best option for you. Because then what you can start to do and, and really what we're focused on is actually helping you automatically use that battery so that you're essentially uh, buying low and selling high into the market. Right? Wow. So that use your battery to then export into the market at the time that it's expensive. Awesome. Well, that, that, that's, <laughs> that sounds fantastic. And look, this is something that we've actually got in this household. We've actually got a solar and a battery. Uh, so awesome. would you be able to, um, are you talking, is it going to be a separate like a um, device that's going to be sitting by the box or by the battery rather? Or how would that look? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few different options there. Um, and and this whole, the, the whole battery market is still really in its infancy days. And so working out the standards. Hmm. Most batteries, though, come ready to connect to the internet. Um, so when you're looking at the major ones from places like Tesla or places like um, the inverters from Solar Edge, mm. they they're already coming ready to to be connected to the internet. So actually, it's just a matter of building the integration then between sort of our prices and, and um, the, those batteries. And mm-hmm. so that's one area that we're really working on and trying to set up different partnerships and and um, different opportunities with different providers to be able to enable that. Yeah. Um, then for some customers as well, there are also sort of um, individual additions that you can then enable. So things like Reposit, um, as well as other companies um, like Switched In, do have hardware devices that can then sort of turn dumb batteries into, into smart batteries okay. um, and enable that as well. Gotcha. Well, that sounds like an interesting area that I'll keep my eye on in future. And um, so at present, is Amber Electric actually Australia uh, available Australia-wide? So we're now available throughout the, the mainland um, national energy market. So mm-hmm. um, from South Australia, Victoria, ACT, New South Wales, and, and South East Queensland. Yep. Um, we're not available in, in Western Australia um, or Tasmania at the moment. Mm. Um, we'd like to come down to Tasmania at some point. There's a, a few different um, changes that we'd have to make to, to go over there. Yeah. Um, and Western Australia is operating on a bit of a different grid. Um, so there's different rules apply there. Okay. But, but for most Australians, we're available. All right, that's fascinating. I didn't, I didn't appreciate that because you know, there's a BassLink cable, so I would have thought they were part of the national net electricity market anyway. Yeah, so, so um, Tasmania are part of the national electricity market. Yeah. Um, but some of the dynamics, because they had so much hydro over there, yeah. Um, it sort of changes some of some of the um, the way that the prices work and so on. And so we'd want to work out exactly um, what's going on over there and make sure that we're actually able to benefit people. Yeah. Um, under the the wholesale model there. Absolutely. And I must I must give a shout out to all those Tasmanians watching and people in the ACT. You guys are rocking it. Like literally most days, 100% renewable. I'll put a little thing on screen now. And uh, yeah, if you want to actually go check it out yourself, the link's down below. Um, so uh, when I originally signed up uh, to get onto Amber, rather, um, I actually put myself on a wait list. Are you still uh, actually doing that? Is that, and why? <laughs> yeah, we, we are. Um, the, the biggest reason is just that we're a small team and we're mm. scaling very rapidly at the moment. Yeah. But we also want to make sure that we're actually trying to deliver people the right experience and make sure that, that everything's working and, and make sure we can onboard people. Yeah. Um, so that's why we've been operating under a wait list for the last... Um, few months yeah um, we hope to we're, we're now onboarding people pretty quickly off that wait list so i think most people are waiting sort of less than two months okay um 
but we're, we're and we're keeping to accelerating that. But uh, yeah, we're just trying to make sure that we don't we don't grow too quickly and then deliver a bad experience for people. Uh, no, fair enough. No, I appreciate that. And um, I myself, I think my wait was uh, probably about a month or six weeks or something like that. So it wasn't bad at all. Yeah. All right, awesome. So look, that's been great, Chris, and I really appreciate your time. Uh, is there anything else you want to add on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think with, it's really exciting times for us. I think we are really excited about the opportunity in battery that we spoke about previously, but we're also excited about other devices. So things like electric vehicles are a big focus for us. Mm. Um, in much the same way that um, with a battery, you can optimize that to, to be buying loads of light. Hi. You can do the same thing with your EV to make sure that that EV is, is charging from cheap renewables and not charging from expensive coal and gas. Yeah. And we want to make that all automated for people and, and make that seamless. Yeah. Um, and then other big devices like hot water systems and, and pool pumps. Mm. Um, so that's really our sort of biggest focus is to make sure that we can start to, to grab these devices and, and automate them so that they run in sync with renewables yeah. to save money and, and accelerate um, the transition there. All right. Awesome. No, I love what you're doing and I uh, really appreciate it. So yeah, good job. No, thank you. Okay. We're uh, still at early days, but lots of work to do. But it's a, it's a fun problem to be coming and solving, and nice when we can make an impact. Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. All right, well, again, thanks very much, Chris Thompson, for coming on. And um, look, guys, if you've got any questions about this, I'll um, I'll maybe consolidate them and uh, I'll shoot them off to these guys, and we'll maybe we'll get some answers. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, so Always again, all right. Cheers. All right. Well, thanks, Chris. <laughs> thanks, Chris.